So let's talk about that April 7th raw. This is what everybody wants to hear about. Goldberg and Jericho get into some shit and have to be separated after that April 7th raw. Allegedly, Goldberg was bad mouthing Jericho's selling ability to at least one other wrestler while backstage. According to one source, and this is from the torch, Hurricane overheard the conversation and after prompting from Kevin Nash, repeated it to Jericho, who got worked up. So Jericho confronts Goldberg about the remark he made and the situation got physical. Jericho put Goldberg in a front face lock and held him there until the two were separated by wrestlers and agents. And eventually they shook hands before leaving the building. Goldberg had a reputation for having a short temper, but one of Wade's sources said that Goldberg handled it the right way. Quote, I don't think Goldberg was wrong on this. I just think hurricane got Jericho all worked up and Jericho was determined to fight Goldberg because he was so worked up. The source also accused Helms of being a shit stirrer and claimed this was not an isolated incident. Goldberg had refused to work a feud with Jericho and WCW largely convinced by Nash who told Jericho who told Goldberg that Jericho was quote too small. Jericho grew frustrated since he felt he deserved that spot. And that was a major factor in his decision to leave WCW when the contract was up and he signed with the WWF. So before we get to what Jericho wrote in his book, did you see this happen? Did you hear about it? What'd you hear? I heard about it. I did not see it happen. No, I wasn't in the dressing room when they got into the fight. Definitely heard about it. You know, it's, it's interesting the, the hearsay and, and, and so on and so forth, of unnamed sources, you know, I, I don't think it's right to talk, you know, if he's going to say something about Jericho behind his back and say it to his face, somebody told Jericho, if it was hurricane, then it was hurricane. I don't know. Hurricane <laughs> probably listening to this will probably tweet us and say, fuck yeah, I said that. Um, so, but Jericho confronted him, Jericho got in his face and confronted him. So you got something to say to me, say it to my face. And from all indications, Goldberg tried to say, no, I didn't say anything at first. And then the more Jericho pushed, the more, you know, Goldberg got up and, and Goldberg uh, grabbed Chris at first, I believe. And again, I wasn't there. I'm getting it all second and third hand too. And shove came Goldberg charged Jericho and Jericho took him down with a, a front face lock. And then they got pulled apart, you know, kind of much ado about nothing. But after all was said and done, it was Jericho that walked back into him and said, Hey, uh, is this going to end here now? <laughs> or, you know, do we have to fight again? Well, I'd rather just, you know, move on and let's shake hands and move the hell on. And that's what I remember. And that was the story that I heard. Going back to, um, the WCW incident. Do you think that Kevin Nash just enjoyed keeping it stirred up too? I think Kevin definitely enjoyed keeping it stirred up and going, Oh my God, you're not going to work with that guy. Well, he could have sold that a whole hell of a lot better. So, you know, the guys do, they stick each other, especially if they know that they've got somebody that's going to bite. And if there's a sore spot, you just, yes. you just pick, 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 Big pick, time. pick. Yeah. Until they just explode. Yeah. We did that to a guy in our real life recently. You and I, who us. <laughs> yeah. Who not me? I'll, you can always tell when somebody's full of shit when their voice goes up like a few octaves. Like, who what? me? What are you talking about? I would never do that. The, You're crazy. There you go. Here's what Jericho wrote. Goldberg was coming to the WWE. The announcement jackhammered through my stomach the moment I heard it. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Problem was, I don't think Goldberg really wanted to come to the WWE, but Rocky lobbied and convinced him until Bill finally relented. I wasn't too keen on him coming in either. Since the last time I'd worked with him in WCW was a complete disaster, but I had no choice and decided to make the best of it. But on the first day he came up behind me and slapped him on the back, slapped me on the back as hard as he could. Hey, Chris, he said loudly and sarcastically like he was Biff and I was McFly. I could tell he was still miffed about how things had gone down with us in WCW. 
I was willing to let the past stay there, but I made a promise to myself. I wasn't going to let this guy throw his weight around in the WWE the way he did in WCW. Coincidentally, a few minutes later, Vince asked me for a strange favor. We've got Bill Goldberg coming in and I want you to welcome him and help him out as much as you can. I don't know if Vince knew about my past with Goldberg. He'd never asked me to help anybody else before, but I told him I'd be happy to do what I could to help him adjust to the new environment. And I intended to do just that. Do you remember Vince sort of having a little birdie, put it in his ear that they had a problem and this being Vince's way of, okay, children, y'all shake hands. (laughs) No, I I don't know. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me at all. And here's why I say that I can see Vince doing that. Vince did the exact same thing to me and Bill Watts, Bill Watts. And I had, had bad blood between each other. And so Vince was like, Bruce, I want you to take care of bill, show bill the way around and then help him out, give him a ride and do all this stuff. So I can, I hearing that for the first time now, I could see somebody going, you know, Jericho and, and Goldberg, weren't the best of buds in WCW and Chris might feel a little funny about Goldberg coming in. Great. I'll have him work with bill and get them together. So Chris writes, it was Goldfinch's first raw. And I, I worked with triple H versus Sean and Booker T. And after the match, I was pulled aside and informed that Goldsmith had spent the entire match barking to Nash about how I didn't know how to sell properly and how I hadn't wanted to do business with him in WCW. And that pissed me off because I'd never had a problem selling for him or anybody else for that matter. I've always done business and it was business. I was trying to do when I wanted to put bill over properly in WCW, but it was obvious to me that he still had a chip on his shoulder. When it came to me, it made me mad that he'd only been with the company a little over a week and he was already up to his old tricks and it was time to put a stop to it right now. I marched straight into the dressing room and I saw Nash sitting in the corner, like a giant praying mantis, acting like he owned the place while Billy boy sat across from him with a self-indulgent smile on his face, throwing caution to the wind. I stood in front of him and stared directly into his eyes. I heard you were saying some stuff about me during my match. I don't know if you realize it, but things have changed. This isn't WCW. If you have something to say to me, say it to my face. Goldbug gave a shaky laugh and said, I didn't say anything about you. Bullshit. I know you did. Something snapped in the Burgermeister and he jumped to his feet. Oh yeah. What about all that stuff you were saying about me on the internet? (laughs) Internet, internet. Are you kidding me? I didn't spend enough time on the internet to check out club Jenna properly. Let alone talk shit about bill fucking gold. Eye. what are you talking about? A vein in his neck popped out like a worm. As he shouted back, Mike Tanay told me about the stuff you said about me on the internet. And I looked at him in disbelief and said, listen, Bill, it's simple. I could be your best friend in this company or your worst enemy. We're probably going to be working with each other at some point, And I could either make you look like a million bucks or make you look like shit. And you wouldn't know the difference. We're all here to make money and do business together. So just fucking relax. And Goldberg says, you never wanted to do the job for me in WCW. You're a prima donna. You're totally wrong about that. And before I could finish the sentence, goldfish grunted like a Neanderthal and grabbed me by the throat. Now, let me preface the rest of this story by saying I'm not the toughest man, nor would I've ever claimed to be. However, when someone puts their hand on my throat and begins to squeeze, it's time to throw hands. Am I right? Let's take a vote to make sure. Uh, once Goldster made his move, I reacted the only way I knew how I swatted his hand off my throat and gave him a two handed push to the chest. He rushed forward with his head down, trying to tackle me like the ex NFL lineman he was. And I stepped to the side, like the world's worst matador and gave him a front face lock. It was the only shoot hold. I knew that harkened back to my days bouncing at Malarkey's in Calgary. I think I surprised the shit out of him with my lethal hold and was able to power him down to the ground, applying pressure because I knew if I pushed his throat into his chest long enough, he might pass out. I really hoped that he would go to sleep because I would I was sure that he was going to fire back up and then kick the shit out of me. I mean, come on. Have you ever seen this guy? He's massive. I continued to hold my own and I couldn't figure out why he wasn't fighting back. I got a little lazy and released the pressure slightly. And suddenly he rolled on top of me. I was freaking out at this point, convinced he was going to eat me. 
but I held on to my patented front face lock. He starts bucking around like a mechanical bull, but surprisingly I was able to use his momentum against him and roll him over again. Yeehaw Jericho two, Goldie zero. It was like WCW all over again, except this time it was real. Well, eventually everybody separates them. Um, this is sort of not what you want to have happen on your second night in. What's Vince, B- Vince McMahon's reaction to this fucking shit going down in the locker room? Not happy and, and pissed off. It's, you know, anytime that the children misbehave, you know, he's going to get angry and he doesn't want guys fighting in the dressing room, screwing up the dressing room. But same time, sometimes it's healthy. So, <laughs> you know, uh, Vince wasn't happy about it. He was glad that they went back. And they shook hands and they, you know, pretty much squashed it on their own, but it's, it's silliness and for not good for bill, you know, no matter what, you know, Bill's new Jericho is, has been there. Jericho's proven his weight and it also boosted the stock of Jericho. Jericho's got coconut balls and you know, yeah, he may not be the toughest guy in the world, but he's not going to back down from a fight either. And so, you know, I give him credit for having the balls to go get in Goldberg's face. So if you're wondering, it was broken up by Arn Anderson, Terry Taylor, Hurricane, Christian, and Booker T. As Jericho writes, Nash Mantis continued to sit in his chair in the corner of the room watching the festivities. (laughs) And they're sort of pulling Jericho off of him. Uh, and, and he's doing this after he's got his legs crossed around his midsection and he's still got this front face lock and they're sort of holding his arms behind him. And he realizes he's in a prone position. Uh, he's thinking he's going to punch me in the face. So he starts screaming, let go, let go. Eventually they do. But as they do, instead of punching him, Goldberg starts pulling his hair. What is it with wrestlers in scuffles in the back, pulling hair? Brett, Sean, well, Goldberg, and Jericho. Well, I'll tell you, you know, one thing about pulling hair is, is if you can control the head, you can control the body. So if you get a hold of somebody's hair and you get a good grip on their hair, you control their body. That's just fighting one hundred and one, man. That's that goes back from my, you know, um, three time black belt Hall of Fame. So right. we teach. So Goldberg, being a martial arts guy, would have taught him that. So once they're sort of separated, and Jericho, uh, pie faces him as hard as he can. And he stumbles back and Jericho now has lost a a handful of hair. Goldberg's probably been embarrassed. Jericho realizes I'm done with this fight. And he screams, what the hell is wrong with you, man? You're acting like a goof. And Goldberg replied, your mother's a fucking goof. And Booker T has the line of the day. As he's chewing an unlit cigar and he says, hold up. Did you just say his mother's a fucking goof? That's the worst insult I've ever heard, man. What should, what would Terry Funk have said that he should have said instead? Your mother's a whore. Be sure to check Bruce tomorrow. And I'll have that. Your mother's a fucking goof shirt up. Um, <laughs> eventually they do settle down. And, uh, Jericho walks back over to bill and says, matter of fact, like, here's the deal. You can shake my hand right now. We can forget about this or we can come to work and do this every single week. I don't give a shit either way. Goldberg looked him in the eye, shook his hand and they called the truce. What a fucking story, man. You know, it's not, if this wouldn't have been Goldberg, this is a real question. If this would have been Funaki, is Funaki getting shit canned. For getting in a fight in the locker room on his second weekend, it would have depend on what the fight was over. Yeah, I mean, but it would it, it would it would really have to depend on on what the hell was going on or how they resolved it. Does Vince have these guys have a meeting after the fact? Does he call them together? Does Jr. Is there ever any sort of repercussions or fallout, or is it just a phone call? Everybody explains what it is, and we move on. I'm sure that Jr. probably got both guys together and or separately. And just said, are we good here? You know, made sure that we weren't going to have any more of this bullshit. They needed to move on. Anytime there's a, a skirmish like this, it's hard to really call it a fight. But when there's a skirmish like this, we all remember back in high school, everybody starts to talk about, oh, who won? And so there's this big vote amongst the witnesses of who won. 
in your opinion, who was everybody saying won this skirmish? Jericho. Did it sour any of the boys on Goldberg? Did it boost Jericho's sort of street cred amongst the boys? Well, it definitely boosted uh, Jericho and the. <laughs> I don't know if the line afterwards, your mother's a fucking goof. Uh, <laughs> you know, that pro that probably hurt more than anything, uh, than getting taken down and everything else. So, um, I just think that it, it helped Jericho and didn't, didn't help Goldberg at all.